party people in the place to be. Live from 58 Dream Street, this is Friday Night Frosthaven. Here we are, gang's all here, starting a little later uh, than planned, but that's okay because our plans are relatively restrained. So good. Player one. <laughs> <laughs> Did I time that poorly? <laughs> Playing the ace through pink onto it, Dr. Becky Goodpain. It's Rich, and as you have now heard, he's doing so good. <laughs> And we're glad to hear it. Yeah, we're here. Uh, we we went right down to the wire last time. And as a result, we finished, the, we won the scenario. And then we just said, okay, gotta go. And we all went to sleep. So this week, we're going to close out. We're going to read the end text of that scenario. Go back and do the outpost phase. Do the road event. And then next time when we get started, we can just get started. It'll be great. So, uh, oh yeah, carry on. Player two, playing the Valrith Deathwalker. It's my lady, Mel D, Death Spice. Danielle, how you doing, babe? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Is the echo going out of control, gang? I can hear the echo a little bit again, yeah. Just a teensy bit. Just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. Just a wee bit of echo. We're working out the kinks. We're projecting... Pretty good audio by next week right now is what we're hoping for. <laughs> player so three. Suffer. Player three. Playing the Inox Drifter, the biggest hobo. It's Greg. How you doing, Greg? Uh, you know, pass, but uh, mm. how you doing, James? Playing yeah, player, player four. four. Player. Yeah, hey, hey check him out. Your friend and mine, your host here at 58 Dream Street, the game runner, the showrunner, playing the Lurker Deep Wraith. Click Trill, yeah. Snip Click. It's James, and I'm doing pretty good. Final grades are in. The year is over. I don't have to teach a new course until Monday. So, so that's great. I have the whole weekend without a, a course on the go. And then um, there, there are many charms to a May-June course, including the fact that I currently have nine students enrolled instead of uh, 353. So it's very manageable. I'm looking forward to getting down to business again. And then after that, to going on vacation for the summer. So that'll be fun too. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's, oh, that echo. Uh, let's, let's dive in. Oh, there's nothing to do to dive in except for me to pick up a book and read it. We don't even have to go to another screen because we're not at the outpost yet. Well, the first thing, we so we've completed scenario 22, Ice Flows. Ice Flows is the scenario that we've completed. And now we've got to do, in order, loot at resources. Right. Just a moment. I'm just going to look up the section for the conclusion of scenario 22, Ice Flows. Yeah. Great. Where you need to be. So that when it's time, we're ready. Okay, so looted resources. Danielle, the Death Walker, looted one lumber. Rich, Dr. Becky Goodpain, he aced the pain going to it, looted two lumber. This was a lumber heavy scenario for the simple fact that we were on the deck of our own ship as it was being chopped apart. Uh, Greg, Got one lumber and one arrow vine. So at least a little variety in there. Yeah. And actually, I did pretty well for myself this time around. I got one lumber. But then mm -hmm. I also got four total coins. And four coins in a level two scenario. I believe those are going to convert at three gold each. And they will. So that's 12 gold for me. All right, bringing you up to 36 gold. Not bad. Okay. One lumber and 36 gold. And excellent news, Greg. Our records are consistent. Fantastic. That's right. no surprise to me to hear that I have 36 gold. All right. Very good. So that's our resources. This is battle goals time? Battle goals, yep. We'll check it out. The Deathwalker was the Leia boat. Gain seven or fewer experience 
before any bonus scenario experience. So babe, on your dial, if you look at the blue gauge, how many experience points did you earn? Four. Then you completed your, your uh, quest. So you gained two check marks for that. So if you look at your character sheet, on, on the right-hand column, right under perks, there's a bunch of check boxes. Mm -hmm. Put check marks in two of those. When you get... Um, yes? I feel like I got more than two, more than four, though. But, like, it wouldn't be much more than four, so it wouldn't matter. Well, I mean, you're also only getting four experience, so... Yeah, you it's, only it's a fair trade. Four. If you actually had earned more, you're not going to get it, and that's a fair enough trade off. Perfect. And then, uh, in we'll we'll figure out a better storage plan for your dial so that we can feel more confident that it's attuned correctly. Mm -hmm. The drifter, or no, sorry, not the drifter. The pain conduit was the cleaner. Collect three or more loot tokens in the same no, turn, failed. which you absolutely Didn't did not. No, uh, you I put myself in position, and then it was like, "All right, need a loot card. Don't have a loot card. What am I like? What? <laughs> what am I doing?" <laughs> Didn't think that through. Oh well, it was a good plan. I mean, no, it was bad plan, but it was good execution. Uh, I just I wanted to pick something that I could do early while I still remembered it, and then be, uh, you know, nicely surprised three weeks later when I get it. <laughs> uh, but then very early, I was like, yeah, this is impossible to get. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least then you didn't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. The drifter was the assistant. Kill an enemy attacked by any of your allies earlier in the same round. Did you do it, Craig? Do you remember? I, I did do it. I remember because I specifically uh, asked you to, to make sure that you had attacked something earlier in the round. Oh, right. I him. remember you saying that, and I assumed at the time that it was just about making sure that we whittled it down. So I'm all perked out. I got one more perk coming my way due to a level up, but otherwise this this totally completes all my you, my check you, boxes. You've earned eight, uh, 18 check marks, Greg, from, yeah. from scenario goals. Have you achieved either of your masteries yet? No, I have not. I suppose I could get two more from that, but I don't think that's happening. <laughs> All right, fair enough. What are your Maybe what are I'll the try. drifters' masteries? End a scenario with your character tokens on the last slots of four persistent abilities, and never perform a move ability or attack with a value less than four, and perform at least one move or attack ability each round. Holy so, smokes! Yeah, it's a difficult one. That they is are a masteries. One. Yeah, and then. The deep wraith was the scrambler. Never long rest. And I did not long rest. So I'll take a check mark. God, I love it when that one's available. Yeah, it's you a, hate long resting. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice <laughs> one. It gives you, you never have to spend a whole round sitting there, even if it would like, be strategically wise. I especially hate long resting uh, as the pain conduit and also in Frosthaven. <laughs> Because all the cards are equally good, first of all. Yeah. It's so, yeah. Yeah. so no randomly duds. losing one is like less of a punishment than it used to be when you might lose the, one of your good cards. Yeah, you you don't have to make the, you don't have to look the card in the eye and say, You're yeah. lost. Uh and also as the pain I don't want to like heal away all my conditions. That's yeah. true too, yeah. Very fair. All right. All right. So, um, great news. For Can't me wait to hear that's... why I should long rest from Martin on YouTube on Monday. <laughs> Martin will catch us up. Oh, Martin, Martin was very disappointed this week in the in in how many loot tokens we left on the map. He did. He did. Uh, in addition to his his rules corrections, just provide a summary of the total number of loot tokens that we didn't pick up. <laughs> and and in fairness. It was quite a few. <laughs> uh, we definitely left a lot behind. But uh, perhaps... We, we did it. We beat it. We yeah. won. We definitely won. We panicked. We looted the best thing of all. Victory. Okay. Uh, experience. Oh, wait. Right. Now we read the scenario conclusion. Oh, um, isn't the challenge? 
Oh, the thing. challenge. Yes. Good point, Craig. The challenge was that. dense fog. All characters, move abilities, value four or greater, are reduced by one. We achieved it. That's a check mark for the town guard. They're second. Nice. What do they need? One more? One more. Nice, one that's more, nice. And we get a perk for the town guard deck. So that's cool. All right. Scenario 22, Ice Flows, the conclusion. The last lurker slumps to your feet and gurgles under the rising pool of seawater. Hunks of ruined hardtack and broken barrel float about your knees, blood dyeing everything a sickly pink. The attackers are dead, but the ship is still sinking. The crew work faster than they've ever worked before, and together you manage to stem the flood before the ship sinks too far. When it's done, you get rid of the bodies. It takes several people to remove each of the dead lurkers. Their wide, awkward bodies are difficult to maneuver. Tell me about it. But they plunge into the icy depths with a satisfying noise. Then there's only one. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I didn't say, hey, got it by voices lurking. Hello, welcome. Then there's only one last problem to solve. The shards. You hold the things tight, but they're still directing you downward, deep into the sea. It's impossible. To dive into this water would be certain death. You hate to admit it, but you'll have to return to town until you can find another way forward. Rewards. We lose one collective lumber for each set of five hexes that have water tiles. And we gain... Uh, That's why Martin wanted us to get all that lumber. Uh -oh. So, okay, so... Oh, man. For each set of five, Do you and there was a total still set up somewhere, James. Uh, yeah. I I don't. Although we could eventually go look at a picture, but I believe it's three. I believe the an I believe the answer three is three because lumber? I think there were seventeen total potential water tokens, and that we were down to two that could have gone it. Uh, okay, then in that case, two from Rich and one for me would bring us all level at two each. Perfect. Take, take all my lumber. <laughs> I have no use. No, for Rich, it. I'm forcing you to. I'm forcing you. Do have a use for it? You just don't enjoy the use. Listen, in my real life, I don't do shit I don't enjoy. You think I'm gonna do it in, in <laughs> game life? Yeah. yeah. Just. just... Pretend like you're role playing. You're pl yeah. you're role playing somebody who enjoys doing shit they don't like. Oh man, sounds Got terrible. Got a bad voice. Says wise words to live by, which are enjoy your lumber. <laughs> you never you never know when you may wake up one day and have no more lumber. Okay. We also each gain fifteen experience. So right. combine that with eight bonus experience for oh, a wow. level two scenario. Is that true? Yes, Oh, it wow, is. So that's a lot. So 23 plus whatever we all earned on our dials. I actually have to go dig my dial out in a second here. Wow, wow, wow. I am going to get to level plenty. four very fast. Wait, Will you get that tonight? Down? No, but like I just got to level three. Like, like yeah, the pain conduit um, gets a lot of XP. I am five experience away from being level nine, so I am definitely leveling up after the next scenario. Nice. And the next Unless scenario, I killed immediately. Retire. the next scenario is not no. a retirement scenario. There you go. Uh, for Greg, like it's not one where we will need the boat, the climbing gear, the dog sled. I also have a fair degree of control. James has already, I see on the stream, James has already updated my uh, I have. my goal. But uh, the next scenario I play that is one of those things is going to be my retirement. So I'll, I'll get to nine and then play at least one on, play at least one as a level nine drifter just to see what it's like. Yeah. And then I will retire finally. <laughs> Excellent. You'll finally get to be the robot. I don't even remember what it's called anymore. The unfettered uh, hey. hive mind? Uh, is just the hive? Quick yeah. Twitch ad. 
yeah. do a, a quick ad for uh, for this platform. Um, for all the parents out there who don't want to spend more than three dollars oh. ever on their kid, <laughs> <laughs> Value Village steering wheel. Put another guy on. T- put somebody on Twitch playing Mario Kart, and she's like, "That's you, man." <laughs> <laughs> That's you, man. <laughs> and he did it. He did it for an hour. <laughs> wow. That can only possibly work did for so long. Did you mute the guy's commentary track? Or does he just think Mario comes with a, a track of some guy talking about Mario? <laughs> like, he, no, no, like it was just, like it was just the video. Oh, it was just video. Uh, okay. But, uh, yeah, like, he knows he's not playing. <laughs> but like, it's pretty cool. Yeah, he can use his imagination. Cheap. Yeah, and pretty free. Yeah, that's a yeah. good deal. And then the final right. result is that we add calendar event sixty-two point two to the calendar in two weeks. <laughs> Hello, Hello. Burner Account, who greets us by saying, then the Mario Kart streamer leaves to host a Just Chat stream. (laughs) He's perfectly dividing his attention. Okay, so I'm just going to get one thing done on the, there, a post map. And then. How many weeks weeks away is this event from happening to us? Boom, two weeks away. Oh, that's not too long. No, not too long at all. It's going to be very soon, in fact. So, here we are, back in the outpost of Frosthaven, where, as it happens, I, uh, I still don't have a carpenter, and possibly never will, because I have reorganized and cleaned my office recently. I found the envelope that the carpenter upgrade stickers and such came in. I have not found the carpenter stickers. Oh, so shit. I don't know what's happened there. It, it, all hope is not lost. Probably at one of our houses. Maybe. What it definitely isn't is easily accessible to me. And what it also definitely isn't is worth buying a replacement sticker set for. Mm. So for now, we're just dealing with a, we have like a, a real rough and tumble carpenter <laughs> just who lives just in an abandoned lot. He well, no, he like. I'm picturing this guy. He has like a small storage shed that he can disassemble and reassemble at every job site, and he also sleeps in it. I mean, it could just be small enough that it's just. It is the like the sled part of the dog sled. Yeah. That's or it could be cool. like maybe maybe the carpenter is the richest man in Frosthaven, so he has a big house, lots of room no, for he's, storing. He's the carpentry. richest man because he has a family that loves him dearly. <laughs> like it's a wonderful life. <laughs> it is valuable to be loved by your family. Mm-hmm. All right, here we are. The first thing that happens is the passage of time. Yeah, so we're already one week closer. Nice. Yeah. Tick. There are only two Does more that mean weeks it's next week left. now we can play Frost even? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll get there eventually. Give it time, Rich. After the passage of time, we do the Outpost event. All right. This is Winter Outpost event number four. Everybody ready? Frost Haven's no stranger to snow, but as dawn breaks, even the longtime veterans of the North utter cries of surprise. An overnight storm has covered the town in a blanket of snow that rises halfway up most of the doors in town. You grumble at first as you dig to clear the longhouse door and get on with your day, but the snow muffles every sound in a way you find soothing, and it isn't long before you and the other inhabitants are free. You breathe a sigh of relief. (sighs) And then the attack bells sound. An Algox warband approaches the town at speed, using their natural abilities to bound across the deep snow without slowing. The guards on duty scramble to assume battle positions. When you glance towards the barracks, your spirits sink. The gates are still half buried. 
You see the mass of doors bulge as the guards within push desperately, trying to swing them out, open against the piled snow. They're making progress, but you can tell they won't make it to the gate towers in time. Option A. Join the fight at the outpost main gate. You might be the only reinforcements these defenders get today. Or option B. Dig out the barracks gates and get the other guards into the action. Oh, we got to fight. I don't know. I'm strong and resourceful. I feel like we could dig them out fast. Yeah, and then we lead them into the fight heroically. Plus, you, Click, Tra- Click Trail Snip Click loves digging. Oh, yeah. There's, a re- there's like a thing to do here, not just say the thing I want to do. Which is I'm chaotic, intimidating, and an outcast. Okay, I don't think any of those will help in this given scenario. I feel like I intimidate could. I'm armored, intimidating, and nimble. Babe, do you have your character board handy? This guy. <laughs> Greg, I thought you were like, yeah. That's right. <laughs> no, I'm, if I'm you look- autistic. If you look right at the bottom where the where the two rows of numbers are, there are three adjectives written right above the <laughs> table. Arcane, outcast, persuasive. Okay. Well, if it's a personality thing, I think between resourceful, nimble, and persuasive, we can get we can either figure it out ourselves or get the get the guards engaged and organized so yeah i i guess i want to try to dig it sounds like you want to try to dig james rich wants to go just help I want the to people fight. yeah which just wants to help fight danielle do you have an opinion oh, on i don't it? want to help fight you just want to do the fighting all on your own <laughs> <laughs> hello mr sterling welcome yeah Danielle, do you have an opinion on these? We're happy to have you here, Elda. You're you're showing up for the first time on an episode with no scenario. We're just doing an outpost phase tonight. No opinion, babe? Okay. All right, we're digging. Yep, we're digging. digs have it. Option B. Here we go. You make your way to the barracks and dig furiously as you hear the sounds of battle behind you. With one last cry of shove, the guards burst forth and form up. You see flames as you approach the action, but your larger force makes a tighter perimeter around the places that matter most. So, on the one hand, we will subtract three targets from this forthcoming attack. On the other hand, we have to wreck one odd-numbered building of our choice. Three. Our odd-numbered buildings are as follows. The mining camp, the logging camp, the alchemist, the carpenter. That's it. Well, don't wreck the carpenter. Wreck the the carpenter. (laughs) The carpenter reduces the price of the thing we have to fix. Yeah. And there's, Uh, I I think we want to wreck either the mining camp or the logging camp because there's no penalty (laughs) to having either of those things wrecked. Um, The logging camp. We have nine lumber. So I say wreck burner the account. Camp. Burner account assures us nothing bad will happen if we wreck the alchemist. So we won't do that. Oh well, yes, that is a penalty, Graham. That's that's true. And hello, by the way. Well, actually, uh, that's a good question. What question? Well, Greg? are you suggesting that burning count might be lying to us about wrecking the alchemist? I mean, I don't think he's lying because like he used a smiley face and. And it's his gimmick, right? <laughs> like, I don't think he's actually trying to fool us. But no, if we if the alchemist gets wrecked, we can't use potions. It's bad. Well, won't we just get it back if we rebuild it? Yes, but we can't rebuild it. Yeah, until what are we next keeping a carpenter around if we can't just rebuild it? It has wreck to be a wrecked thing. I do not believe we can rebuild until next time. No, no, no. The wrecked effect of the building will then be resolved during the building operation step of outpost phase. Oh, okay. So we can't rebuild it. We just have to take the effect with us for one scenario. Yeah, and the effect is we can't use potions until it's rebuilt. So we're not going to be using potions if we're just in town. And if nobody wants to craft a potion this round, I I don't think it will be that bad. 
unless I'm misunderstanding. No, I think. Fib, could you drag? Stop dragging things on your desk. It's just it's very very loud. My bad. That's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. We'll, uh, uh, in the fullness of time, we're gonna get a better. We'll have a much better setup. <laughs> than... Let's burn down the lumber yard. All right. The logging camp <laughs> is wrecked. Totally wrecked. All right. What would happen if we fought? We don't know. If we fought, uh, I won't read the text, but we would have gained two morale. PJ, welcome. All right. All right. Wow. Jeez. Big crowd. Tur- big crowd turning out for us to just do an outpost phase tonight, <laughs> which is great. Glad to have you all here with us. Okay, let me get this sweater off. Did I not learn my lesson last week? Obviously not. Okay. So now it is an attack. It's an attack 15 that targets seven buildings, but... But minus three, so just four. Minus three, so just four. It's going to target... Congratulations... It's wonderful to not be working. You normally work Friday nights? That's a drag. Uh, So it's going to target odd-numbered buildings in order of closest to furthest from the gate. So, oddly, uh, as it happens, we only have four odd-numbered buildings. Wait. Yes. So one of them got wrecked. So taking three targets off did not benefit us in any way. It could have. Um, where's, where's the gate? Visually, is this the gate? No, it's it's right next to it. Oh, of those two That's towers. Of course it is. Yes, yes, like a like a town gate. That makes sense. Yeah, you know, so, like a gate. Yeah, the closest <laughs> odd number thing is the carpenter. <laughs> So this is going to be an attack 15 against the carpenter. Our total defense is 25. So I don't, I I say we probably don't kill anything. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's not kill anyone. Well, that's fine. You don't need to sacrifice a guard. So there at the carpenters vacant lot, (laughs) but imagine as if the carpenter sticker was there and I hadn't lost it. It's a plus zero. We got it. Carpenter's safe. Next up is the alchemist. So we don't want this to go bad. Attack 25. Pulling it. Hi. Danielle said hi to your butt. Oh, I was like, what? what is happening? Is somebody in my home? <laughs> <laughs> like some, like somebody cute, like a little bird or something. It's a minus 10, but that's okay because 25 minus 10 is 15. The alchemist survives. And finally, the uh, mining camp. Attack 25, or attack 15, another minus 10. We're okay. Alchemist raiding bands are not really all that impressive. This one wasn't anyway. No. Yeah. Not uh, impressed. All right, building operations. Okay. Just shuffling this for the future. There we go. All right, building time. It's time for the mining camp. Mr. Sterling likes the outpost phases. So uh, I do too. I think Greg does. Yeah. I bet Danielle is still agnostic. Rich is not a fan. <laughs> Rich could do without the outpost phases. James, you got 36 gold. Do you want to pay for the uh, the upgrades this week? Absolutely. We can collectively buy up to one metal for two gold. I'll buy it. Two gold from Sniff. Click trills. Sniff. I think that I would like the outpost phases if we got together and played weekly. And the like togetherness factor was was there, and we all were also like snacking and shit, and, like just having fun. And but we as a 
as a thing that I do my setup for, not a fan. That's fair. <laughs> and it like, it, also, oh. I'm sure that just if in general the pace of our campaign was faster, yeah. it, would, it would enhance the downtime experience more. But hey, you go to war with the army you have. Okay, two gold down for me. All right. And I uh, want to just put that metal in the in the outpost supply. Oh, I just gave it to you. It doesn't okay. make a difference to me. All right. I will write it down for myself. Okay. The mining camp's done. It is time for the hunting lodge. I'll pay two gold so we can collectively purchase up to one hide. But please put that in the outpost so I don't have to erase the number two and write the number three okay. on my sheet. There you go. Yeah, well, Mr. Sterling, the thing is that Rich Rich has very situational reasoning. It's it's totally valid within our situation, but it's not really a critique of the game design. The oh, outpost, no, I don't do that. The outpost phase is well designed. I well, speak pretty clearly about uh, what I want <laughs> and <laughs> what I'm feeling <laughs> and how things affect me, but that's about it. It's craftsman time. I don't think anyone has anything to craft, though. Well, well, that helps. That happens during the, the next step, anyway. We're just doing building effects. Which is whittle. Right, right. Lumber. That's downtime. Make a cool walking stick. Okay. Uh, Alchemist, no effect. Enhancer, no effect. Workshop, no effect. There's, there's nothing. There's no more. <laughs> No more over. What about the barracks? Are we fully stocked up on guards? Oh, no, we're not fully one? stocked up on guards. You're right. I will collect. Uh, we can collectively train during the barracks, up to one soldier, in exchange for three gold and one resource. I'll pay the three gold. Uh, let's give them a hide. We've got so much hide. I'll I'll give a hide. I have nine. Excellent. There, we we paid and outfitted a guard. Hooray. Terrific. He's he's one of the less important recruits, so he gets hide instead of metal armor. <laughs> he's warmer than the other Or recruits, yeah, though. maybe he he gets a sleeping bag. No sword. <laughs> but, no sword. But he'll be no very need. well he'll be well rested. And then he can use the sleeping bag like a combat net. <laughs> He just needs to save oh, up hey. for a. He just needs to save up for a spear. Uh, so we're into down. We're into step four downtime now. Downtime, yeah. I level up. Uh, oh yeah, you level up. Good click job. trail, snip click. The lurker deep wraith becomes level three. Snip click click, click. and uh, so I got a cool new power. I've already made my choice, even though I'm not even gonna get to use it tonight. We're not doing a scenario. It's cool. I like it. It would have been extremely helpful in the scenario we just completed. So I hope that what I'm doing here is correctly identifying a cool power and not fighting the last battle. Uh, but I guess time will tell on that. Time will tell. Okay. Okay. Um, I think I don't think anyone's crafting or brewing anything this week. No. Although James, I think maybe still I don't. Did you update the craftsman yet, James? Uh, oh I don't, no! I, I got. I have to up, no, I have to update that. I will do that uh, soon, very soon. Okay. I mean, the the winter term is officially over. In theory, I have, right. I have time soon. Ah. So in that case, Graham, excellent question. I took actually two perks, and I have made those choices as well, because I leveled up, but I also got my third check mark from accomplishing my battle goal. So I removed. I took the ignore scenario effects and removed two plus zeros. And I took replace two plus zeros with two pierce three roll throughs. Nice. So I like, I, I, I probably need to focus next on getting some of the other negative cards out. But right now it's a pretty mobile deck. And I took a two minus ones already. Two minus ones and four plus zeros all removed. Less. Thanks. Um, okay, so James, uh, reading the, the final step, construction, 
we can build and upgrade one building and then spend morale if we want to do more. Uh, but we can rebuild any number of wrecked buildings. Wait, wait, so, hold on. Was I supposed? Of course, I was. Supposed to what? I didn't read the end of the battle. Exhausted. Oh shit! You finished gathering the injured. Satha is already oh. working with the guards on more routine snow clearing schedules. We gain three collective hide. <laughs> of course, we do. The thing we need the least. Oh. oh. And in fact, I gotta go. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to get there. Burner camp. You told me that last time we won a battle, we were also supposed to, I think, get three hide. But we were supposed to get some amount of hide last time too. There's no way in hell. We don't need this much hide. We have 21. <laughs> we're good. We can just just have an entire hide cube. Just the walls, the ceiling, the floor, just lined with hide. It's the rage room. You can go in there and just scream a bunch. Two hide. Two more hide, Greg. Two more hide. Retroactive okay, hide from the ancient past. I'll give it to Rich. Hooray. Rich, you got two hide now. Okay. Um, uh, so, yeah. So the... the, uh, the, the Build. What do we have as an option to build, and do we have any options to upgrade? That, that's a that's a good point. Uh, so we got attacked by Inox the other time, and Burner Account is pointing out that the hide is from when we skinned them after we killed them. Mm. Or maybe they were carrying hide. Oh, Graham points out we could craft single hide items and then sell them for two bucks. I don't feel like, uh, listen, I like the outpost phase, but I don't think we should be using it as like a, as like a, a, a like mining operation like that. I mean, just, we could, I'll just, I'll just craft a bunch of white armor and then sell it for two bucks. <laughs> yeah. You know, the worst part of an MMO. Well, Mr. Sterling, the hide, Mr. Sterling says we can make hide walls as long as none of our enemies have any weapons at all. But... Uh, we could make double thick hide walls and we'd probably still be counting on them not having weapons. But uh, we could make drum walls. If they come at us with blunt weapons, it'll just be banging. We can have a dance party until they, you know, club their way through, which will only take a few hits. So, uh, James, what do we have to build uh, and or upgrade currently? Uh, we gotta, we gotta have to fix. Hold on, what do we do to fix? Right well, we this? fix after. First, you build and repair, oh. and then you fix. Okay. Let me just get the section out. Get the book out. Make sure I remember. Construction. Okay. So. Yeah, what do we have? What do we have here? Let me take a look. Looking through the deck. We could upgrade the mining camp, the hunting lodge. Uh, not the logging camp, because it's wrecked. Yeah. The uh, the craftsman is available for upgrade. Oh, is it no. really? We should do no. that. No, sorry. I'm wrong. No, I'm not. Okay. Never mind. No, okay. we're prosperity okay. level three. Are we? Is that new? No, we've been prosperity level three for a while. Oh, it's four so, we're working towards. Yeah. So we could do the, okay. the craftsman. Uh, we could do... That, actually, okay. those are our options. The mining camp, the hunting lodge, the craftsman. I'd like to do the craftsman if you're willing to upgrade that list. Absolutely. The craftsman. Upgrading the craftsman will cost us four lumber... Three metal. Oh, I got lumber. Take some of my lumber. Two hide. Any gold? No. Oh wow, that's that's good then. Um, uh, we've got all of that. Uh, In the general, we'll take it from Rich because he loves ah. to get taken from. He loves to so, give. Rich, I'm going to take your. Uh, I'm gonna take it your sounds more wholesome lumber. if you say that he loves to give. That's true. Yeah. I'm going to take your lumber and your hide. Uh, I'm also going to take uh, two of my uh, lumber. 
Uh, and then I will take two of uh, of my metal and one of James's metal, and that pays for the upgrade. Took one of my metal? I did indeed. All right. I have erased it from my sheet. Ah, yeah. Upgrading never costs gold, Greg. Oh, it's only, okay. It's only new it's buildings building. that require capital up front. Okay, the level four craftsman. We are going to. Anything to read? No. Okay. We're going to add, well, except for new item cards. So I'll have a lot of stuff to add. We get one prosperity tick, three more, and we'll hit prosperity level four. And then we're going to add items 21 through 25 to the craftable supply. So let me just dig those out. Unavailable craftable items. And it should just be the ones right at the front, right? Yep. yep. 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. New items. Excitement. Rich, new items. Get hyped. Ah, this might feeling. actually be something you want. So, uh, yes, the, the spreadsheet... Oh, uh, is in fact, uh, I, I built the spreadsheet and Greg operates it because I just, I can only do so much. And, but I did, it is my own creation. I love making spreadsheets. Oh no. Burner account makes a great point. I, uh, I was reading the upgrade cost wrong. I was reading the upgrade cost off the level three card, but that's the cost to upgrade to the so we can't have the craftsman i'm sorry oh no well i'll reverse what i did i guess yeah okay i will put those cards back james and update wait the craft wait <laughs> no no stop stop burner account says burner account backpedals it says we had a right Whew. it's a roller coaster okay but just in time thank you mr sterling i'm pretty pleased with it there are some things that I would like to fix about it. Oh, hey, Greg, did you turn on, did you tick on the guard that we added? No, I didn't. I forgot. Okay, I will do that. Let me take him back. We're back up to full guard. Boom, full guard. Yeah, like... This, it might be a summer project for me to like take a day and redo some of this stuff from scratch instead of just constantly tweaking it. But it's a pretty good spreadsheet. It certainly gets the job done for us. All right. The new craftsman items. Check it out. We get the chain hood. I'll zoom in for these so we get a better look. The chain hood. The chain hood costs three metal and one hide. And when you have the chain hood on, it's a head item, of course, that adds a single minus one into your deck. While you're adjacent to three or more enemies, you gain a shield. It's a pretty restricted oh. benefit. But you know, it would actually be great for click, trill, snip, click, now that I think about it. Except that it makes no sense. How would she fit a chain hood on her head chain hood would be easier to fit because it's just a i guess chain. it's just hanging right you just spread it yeah. out on top it's just kind of like a be like a chain yarmulke we get the heavy chain armor we've got a theme going here it takes an item 12 what's item 12 greg i assume some kind of armor uh item 12 yes that's the crude chain armor Combine crude chain armor with a metal, and you get heavy chain armor. It adds two minus twos into your deck. It's a body thing, of course. It is spent, and it says, when you suffer damage from an attack, you gain three shield on that attack. Okay, so that's slightly better than crude chain armor. Yeah, it's it's going to be like a gradual, gradual process of improvement. We have the Sturdy Greaves. Sturdy Greaves cost two metal and two hide. They go on your feet. 
You get two minus ones in your deck for them. They are spent. And when you, uh, at the start of your turn, if you want, you can add, actually, wait. No, it just says at the start of your turn, add minus two move to all your move abilities to gain shield one this round. So I guess the idea is you actually have to clap the sturdy greaves on in the middle of the battle. And they don't have very good clasps, so they fall off by the end of the round. And then you well, they're need... Just, yeah, they're just spent. You can pick them up. Until, but until you can rest, you don't have time to gather them back up and put them back on. Hey, 24, the Corrupted Blade. I've already got a Corrupted Blade. But if we combine an item... 14 and an item 98. I assume one of those is a blade and one of those is a like rotten potion or something. The unhealthy mixture and the heavy yeah. sword. Yep. Uh, uh, and with this, it's a single-handed weapon and you lose it during your melee attack or you, you exhaust it, consume it. Uh, you add wound, poison, and muddle to a single attack. And finally, the soothing scepter. It costs one lumber, one hide, and one rock root. And during your turn, uh, and it's a single-handed item, it's spent. During your turn, you can give regenerate to one ally within two hexes. Oh, nice. An yeah. item that Rich definitely does not want. <laughs> well, we got some nice... Well, he might want it to give regenerate to people. Why, would he, why do you want his friends to get better? He needs them sick so that he can benefit. But part of his thing is preventing us from getting sick in the first place. I think it's in his interest. I don't think he'd want it used on him, of course. No. In fact, he quite what? explicitly Sweet would. to give to Flesh Friend. Yeah. yeah. Flesh Friend could just soak it up. Okay. Uh, yeah. now so we, we did rebuild. that upgrade. And now we can rebuild. The rebuild cost of the logging camp is two lumber and one metal. Okay, we got that. Uh, two lumber. You can just take mine. Okay. And uh, Lauren still has two metal. Oh, it still has two lumber. Do you want to take one of Lauren's? Take it. She would want us to take her lumber. I actually think this isn't Lauren's. I actually think this is... Uh... Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, Michaela's? I, th I think we just didn't date Lauren's name, but I think we uh, we still have this as... Uh... Oh, right. I remember. Yes. Well, Michaela would definitely give us the medal. Yeah. So we'll take her medal. So it's rebuilt. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. I uh, somehow I misplaced... Oh, here they are. The mining camp and the hunting lodge. Found them. They tried to make their way back into the yet-to-be-built or upgraded buildings. What I'm hoping is sometime during the summer, we'll get Lauren to do a guest spot back here. And we could just take a full 45 minutes to just tell her every sick bird that, we, that <laughs> has been landed on her since she was gone. Okay. That's it, right? That's it, yeah. That's the, that's the, that's the outpost phase. So we're back here. I have progressed in my goal. Which I feel bittersweet about because I there really is. enjoy being Click Trill Snip Click. But actually, I mean, she's, she's going to be around a while longer. I still have to be there for seven more construction or upgrades. which we, we haven't been using the option to drive the townspeople and sacrifice their morale to do multiples. And as long as we carry on with our kindness in that regard, I will get to be her for seven more scenarios, at least. And if there's some force links, even more. Or if we somehow become horribly uh, impoverished. All possible. Let's do a road event. Oh, Graham, not only not only do I agree that we want to obviously get this event, read this section 161.3 for maxing out morale, 
I also think I would have a really hard time agreeing to use the mechanic of abusing the people. Oh, Mr. Sterling, I'm glad you think so. Just wait until we're uh, we're doing a scenario and I'm trying to remember all the focus rules while participating in the <laughs> chat and also we're getting off track. Oh, it's fun. I also do a lot of things. Yeah. We do. Which we is all... why you'll find Rich is very distracted sometimes. <laughs> It's, a, it's an action pack. There's always something going on just outside the frame. There's, there's a depth to this show. You know, it is layer. It is, you know, it's an iceberg. You only see so much, but there's a lot there. Hunter is just off camera there. Oh, I was going to say Abra's right here. Abra had been hanging out with me in my uh, sitting in my chair, but she is gone. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm glad to have you here, Mr. Sterling. We'll be here for quite, uh, we, we, we got this, we started the very start of last year in 2023. And we are, we're still like, I feel like in the first quarter of the campaign. So there's, there's plenty of Frosthaven left to go. And we're having a lot of fun, I think. I hope. I certainly hope. I mean, I know I am. So the next scenario, Burner can't ask what the next scenario is. It's Caravan Guards. We are going to go to the Caravan Guard scenario and finish off the quest line of opening up trade lines back to Gloomhaven. Okay. And so that's where we're going next time. It's a protect the wagons scenario, as the name implies. We'll be on just a big single two tile map. It looks like fun. There's a road built out of overlay tiles. The, the wagons will just go down like the road. So there's not that much to think about. Like, we don't have to think, like, where would the caravan go? The the wagons even have a rule that they can just run over people. So nothing can block their path. They will just knock them out of the way. So it's a scenario that is guaranteed to last exactly 11 rounds. Because on the 11th round, the, fi the fifth and final wagon will escape if it hasn't been destroyed. I suppose, actually, if it's destroyed before it escapes, we can end sooner. Uh, the people of Gloomhaven, Mr. Sterling, can't possibly be doing worse than they were when they had they had the evil patch of death sand in the middle of town that steals your soul if you step on it, and they hadn't even built like a security fence around it. <laughs> Remember, there's no. an event. There's an yeah. event teasing where the the gloom where the gloom is like interred in Gloomhaven, where it's just like a little girl just goes on the death sand and like starts dying. Well, it's she like, shouldn't have gone on the like, death sand. Obviously. Yeah, but this is why I'm saying we can put a chain around that. There, there's any number of things that you could do to discourage people from going on the death sand, up to and including teaching them about it in school. Like, I know the kids, like you know, they're not going to do every single thing you say. But I feel like if I was a kid and, and they had been like, by the way, this one patch of sand out on the playground is the death sand. I would have I would have been on the whole other side of the playground. I would have taken that advice to heart and I would have preserved myself from the death sand. It's a pretty good chance I would have gone in the death sand. <laughs> There's a non-zero chance he would have gone in the death every, sand. I mean, every kid is different. Part of what makes them all so charming. All right. Well, we're going to the caravan guard scenario, and we want to start as soon as we can next time. So our, as our final uh, official act, let's do the road event. This is winter road event 11. For as far as the eye can see, the view is the same. Nothing but Kivak, pack animals known for their rocky skin and prominent horn. Hundreds packed in together for warmth or comfort, block the path ahead of you. As you approach, they stop their grazing in an eerie unison, their heads turning to you in perfect concert. They refuse to part to allow you passage. A quattral shepherd in muddy overalls steps forward from the crowd. Yep, they'll let you through, but they want something in return. The Kivak blink in unison. You look at him, not understanding. It's a Kiv archive. All linked up, he says, as if this clarified things. I actually think that did clarify things to me. A little, maybe, yeah. Yeah, they're harrowers. He rolls his eyes. Harrowers. 
They're a bunch of bugs that all work as one thing. Savas is thinking rocks. Heck, even humans are just gray worms swimming around in a skull, driving a skeleton around. This here is a bunch of kivak all as one. Anyways. Oh, they're not harrowers. They're just like harrower-esque. Anyways, they want something first. The animals part, leaving a single member of their group staring at you in the center of the clearing. Now that one wronged the others. They want you to kill her. He shrugs. I understand him, but I can't say I understand him. The Kivak waits, unblinkingly. Option A, kill the Kivak. Option B, refuse and force your way through the sea of animals. Click Troll Snip Click says we kill it. I mean, I can't. What, do you have an argument against killing it, Rich? <laughs> it just seems like a dumb thing to do, but in the game, it's probably the right thing to do. <laughs> well, like this is fair. It's weird, right? We don't we don't know much about these these hive mind kivak, but apparently I mean, we're just gonna end up killing the other ones if we don't kill this one, or we're gonna get like yeah. super tired or like trampled or something. Yeah. yeah, in the process of killing them, like. I gotta, I gotta figure like a hive mind, like their justice system needs to be pretty reliable, right? Like this can't be a false yeah. conviction. And like they wouldn't take it lightly, I hope. Yeah, but anyway, click. Uh, that's that's my own thoughts. Click trail snip click thinks that we should kill this thing. She'll take its skull. Yeah. Babe, do you have any feelings about killing the Kivak? At the behest of its uh, brethren. Kill it. I'm down with killing it. All right. <laughs> Time to die, Kivak. Across the board. <laughs> Option A. Kill the Kivak. You cut the doomed Kivak down. It doesn't move or cry out, having seemingly accepted its fate. The remaining Kivak part and allow you to pass. No longer interested in the proceedings. The shepherd mumbles as you go. Most Kivak just want to eat dirt and grass. Of course, I get the weird ones. No mm. effect. Sweet. No effect. Okay. Cool event. Cool event. Huh. That was so, awesome. okay. Does it go back in the deck? Uh, it, Hope it does again. not. Hope we get it every time. It doesn't. Uh, had we, you know what? Had we said no, we would have actually been okay because the Oakcast property allows us to. Uh, Help the reject, and by by relating to it, and then we'd all get a check mark. So that's oh. a shame. But on the plus yeah. side, I guess we killed a thing. You yeah, know, that's yeah. I was just gonna say, you know, in retrospect, this is actually a fairly realistic response here. We did the thing the things wanted, and they let us pass as as they said they would. Yeah, it's fine. So, Everything yeah. was exactly like it seemed, including the fact that. A hive mind organism executing part of itself. The part of itself is just kind of like, yeah, okay. So, all right. Weird. Great but stuff. That's what we do. Great stuff. We did it. It worked. Rich asked if he thought we could do an outpost phase in one hour. The song at the start is six minutes long, and we are one hour and four minutes into the stream. We've done it. We've so, done yes. it. Hello, Hunter. Hi, Hunter. Hey, Hunter. As far as uh, Hunter can't hear us, of course, but he can't hopefully hear in spirit. <laughs> he... <laughs> uh, okay, so hey, we pretty efficient, but we got it done. We're all set up to start the caravan guard scenario, so hopefully that one will finish comfortably in two weeks. And yeah, this was fun. Mr. Sterling, thank you for joining us. Hope to see you back. Uh, thanks to everyone else. What's going on the rest of the weekend or the rest of until the next time we meet? Well, Tomorrow, I'll be back in King's Quest, Mask of Eternity. Connor has now made his way to the Gnomish Mines, which I believe is the third last of the realms. But I can't remember the names of all the worlds or anything. I just remember in my long struggle to get this working, I was constantly copying files around. And and it, I think there were seven different names of, of folders that sounded like areas. Plus seven just seems like a good number. 
So I think I'm on five of seven. I'm not sure. It's pretty cool. I, I, I'm enjoying the game far more than I ever would have expected to. So I'll give it that. It's weird that it's called King's Quest. But, you know, whatever. I like this, this you know, young dullard Connor with his, uh, he, 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 his primary character trait, Connor, the main character here, is just having absolutely no personality. Uh, he is just a real, real dull, uninteresting guy. <laughs> he has nothing to say. Uh, my favorite detail is you can, like, there's still some adventure game DNA in this, so you can click on things in the environment and Connor will talk about them. But if you go into Connor's own house, there is nothing you can click on in his own house that inspires a single thought in his mind. And also, in the corner of his house, the first time I went in, there's an easel. And I was like, oh, wow, well, like, here's some layers to Connor's character. He's an artist. He likes to paint. And you go over, and it's just a blank canvas. And then there's like a pile of blank canvases <laughs> next to the easel. <laughs> this guy has nothing. Just nothing inside him. He just goes home after a long day of toil and just sits there staring at a blank canvas. On Sunday, if I can fit it in, it's, it's iffy, but I really want to because I was rated a point. I was on tenterhooks. Well, he's in, like, it is interesting that this just random dude is the like champion of eternity or whatever he's called and that he's able to punch monster heads off before he even has any magic weapons or anything. He's interesting in that regard. But I don't know what you'd like talk to him about if you had to hang out with him. Uh, yeah. On Sunday, keeping up the theme of Sierra adventure series coming to an ignominious end in the late 90s, uh, we'll be playing Quest for Glory 5, Dragon Fire, where I did that thing that I've done in most of these games where I get completely stuck because I'm I'm totally in the wrong area and I can't figure out how to advance the story. I spent all this time trying to build a flying machine so that I could fly to the next island I need to get to, which is too far. It's in the choppy water. You can't go to it by boat. And at one point, I looked at the map, and I was like, hey, the island of Minos is in this game. Could I go and talk to Daedalus and Icarus, and they would give me some advice about how to get a flying machine working? Because they kind of know about that. Uh, and then you can't get to Minos because it's in the choppy water. And then I gave up right at the end. And then I was reading the Wikipedia entry about Icarus, and I was reminded that his wings were held together with beeswax, which I remembered is an item that my character has. And then I realized this whole time I'm probably supposed to be building Icarus wings to fly to the first island I need to get to, and then I'll build a flying machine later. So I have like a half-flying machine, half-built flying machine that the game won't let me advance the quest to build because I'm not supposed to be doing it yet, I think. We'll find out. Hopefully I don't fly too close to the sun on that one. Tuesday, fingers crossed, Greg will be here. We'll be beating him up. Uh, Greg and I, if you like beat em up video games, you will love Greg and James beat em up. The show where Greg and James play every single beat em up that was ever made. We're making our way. We're in 1991 now. And then, before you know it, it'll be Friday again. And we'll be back here. And we'll be playing Frosthaven. I mean, we're playing Frosthaven when we do the outpost phase, but you know what I mean. We'll be doing a scenario. We're double playing Frosthaven. We'll be, Frost. we'll be playing Super cards. Playing. We'll be making moves. I'll be saying, sound off uh, all the things that the people love. And we can't wait to do it. We can't wait to have you here with us doing it. So, hey, this is where we've been. This is where we are. This is where we're going. If you stuck around to the end, thanks for sticking around to the end. If you came and you left, you can't hear my voice. But I'm glad you stopped by anyway. So thanks for stopping by. And until the next time, when we're pushing those wagons down that road, take care of yourselves. And be kind to everyone you meet.